Welcome back everyone. I have something new. Let's open it up and have a look. This is the DGI Pocket 3 video camera. And right up front, I'm going to tell you it has been the best purchase decision I have made in a long time. This is not going to be a video about um, like a review in respect to all the specs and that. There are plenty of videos out there with that. I'm going to show you how it has transformed how I do YouTube videos and even other work for customers. So this is a multi-tool device that I can put in my pocket and go anywhere. So in essence, all I really need is this, a couple of mics, a small stand, put it in a little backpack and off I go and I can produce 80-90% of the videos that I require. That's how good it is. Now DGI market this as a one inch sensor and everyone is getting quite excited about that. And rightly so to a point but it's not what you think. And I think a lot of people think this is uh, getting up there like a full frame camera. It's not. I want you to have a look at the graphic that's uh, on the screen at the moment. And as you will see, the size of the sensor for this is actually one up from uh, iPhones or smartphones and action cameras like your GoPros. But unlike uh, with your smartphone and GoPro, the sensor, which is actually bigger, doesn't use any of the pixels for stabilization. So you've got the double whammy that you've got a, a bigger sensor, more pixels, and the stabilization is being handled by a mechanical gimbal on the device. At that sweet spot where you've got really good image quality, plus with the advances in computational um, uh, photography and videography, it in essence does everything you would want it to do short of having a lens that you can mount on it to give you a telephoto um, capability. And look, just a brief explanation, why is it called a one inch sensor? It's a historic um, sort of throwback. If you look at the graphic that's on the, on the uh, screen at the moment, you'll see an old vacuum tube from the old CRT um, cameras. And again, I'm not going to get bogged down in the technicalities, but the sensor that the analog sensor that they used to um, sense the, the information is equivalent to the size of the sensor that's in this. The one inch comes from the actual OD of the tube. And that's why it's called a one inch sensor. So why do I call it the multi-tool video device? Simple. It has massive amount of functionality built in combined with the form factor it enables this device to um, convert into all sorts of uh, applications. If you look at the screen with the uh, animation that's on there at the moment, it will detail the modes. There's panorama, photography, video, uh, low light, slow motion, and time lapse. And then when you dig deeper into all those different modes, you've got all sorts of different settings. With the slow motion, you can get up to, uh, especially in HD, 240 frames per minute. But even with the 4K, you get 120. I mean, that's pretty impressive. So look, here is a, a situation. Recently, I was visiting a marina here in Somerville, and um, I whipped out the, uh, the Pocket 3. I wanted to get... Um, Number one, a panorama of the marina. Number two, I wanted to get a time-lapse um, sort of video of the clouds. It was one of those days we had beautiful puffy clouds and a blue sky, and you've got these different vessels in the marina. So I wanted to get a shot of that. I programmed it, so it went on an arc and did that. I even shot some um, local wild grass. The wind was blowing quite heavily, so I put it on um, 120. 
frames per second and uh, as you can see that's on screen now and um, oh, there's some you could call them gimmicky but um, you can actually set up the gimbal so that you can move the camera in and out and have the gimbal rotate and if you have a look now you'll see the shot that I was mucking around with that one of the other one of the other great features about this is you can track yourself and you can also combine this with your iPhone or your smartphone you download the DJI Mimo app and uh, you fire up that app it communicates with this and then so you can set this up on a tripod or a stand or something and you can go over and you can literally see exactly what is on this screen and you can manipulate the camera and reposition the gimbal you can then draw a little line around you set up tracking put your phone in your pocket and then start talking to the camera and it's focusing and following you you can walk around and it's like someone is on a tripod tracking you and it's just you there by yourself there are so many functions there look if you look at the uh, the images that are on the screen at the moment I put a very long pole into this and these images you're seeing now uh, were shot using that long pole I mean the beauty of this device is that you can do things that you just can't do with conventional cameras but the quality of the image is up there so um, again I come back to the multi-tool functionality and let's touch on photography now okay the megapixel count is low I'm not sure what it is I think it's around 9 megapixels but it, with good light you get really good images but the other thing I love about it when you shoot pictures you actually shoot two files you get a JPEG and you get a DMG file and for those who don't know that's a raw file that's a generic raw file that you can bring into your um, like in my case um, capture one and process them and if you look at the screen at the moment I went out and took a few shots around the house and outdoor these the images that are up there now you'll see them side by side your JPEG version with the DMG which has been um, uh, processed in capture one now if you go through these images you can see what you can do I mean it's perfect for when you want to uh, use it pictures in your video project so in essence you can with this one device go out and capture everything you require for your project you can sit down script it out and then literally capture it all put it all together and there you go it does have one limitation though it's not as robust as uh, a GoPro uh, it's not an action cam saying that though I have a DJ, DJI Spark drone from 2017 and I've crashed that drone I've lost count of the amount of times I've crashed it and guess what the gimbal just keeps working DJI have had a lot of experience at building pretty tough gimbals and I would suggest it's built into this so I would suggest that this is the perfect device for someone like me that wants to be able to shoot various different types of videos and then be able to stitch them together to put together uh, a final edit and I think it's also perfect for the family man or family woman who wants to have something to whip out and be able to get their kids and their family it really is a brilliant move on behalf of DJI anyway thanks for watching